You are listening to the World Sports Show on WPPMLP Philadelphia. Soccer-based sports talk covering local, nation, and global soccer. Broadcasting from the Philly Cam Studio in Center City, Philadelphia on 106.5 FM. Show. Charlie Flo here with John DeCrucio, April 24th, 2017. Another great episode you're listening to on the World Sports Show. We're broadcasting on WPPM LP Philadelphia on your FM dial, 106.5 FM on the interwebs, phillycam.org slash radio slash listen. So how are you doing tonight, John? I'm doing good. Thanks for asking. Another good night. Another good show coming up. I think it's always I'm great excited. when you lead into the show. The show before us, Vanessa's show. The Elevated had some science music going on, so always puts me in a good mood. Man. <laughs> Showing my age there. Yeah. Yeah. Thomas Dolby playing. Dude. It doesn't get any better than that. It brought back the conversation of cassette tapes versus black cassette tapes, clear cassette tapes, white cassettes. Every once in a while, there'd be like a yellow cassette tape, and then there was the sun-scorched tapes of, if you left it outside too long, it would change colors. <laughs> right. Wasn't he a Dolby surround sound inventor? Thomas Dolby. Yeah. Could be. <laughs> Something could be. like that. It's a Wikipedia fact. <laughs> Wikipedia is 100% accurate. That's right. <laughs> hey, dude, we use it a lot for references to finding out player profiles. Sometimes you see some things in there, and you're like, oh, need to update that. <laughs> so... But we got a great show tonight. We have two amazing guests that will be calling into the show a little later tonight. Sabrina D'Angelo, goalkeeper for North Carolina and NWSL, and also Canada Women National Team, and also keeper coach for the Orlando Pride, Lloyd Yaxley, out of England. So definitely a lot of goalkeeper. I know we had a goalkeeper coach in last week and goalkeeper pro player, Scott Croce. So it's... Treat for you goalkeepers, but we'll, we'll try to get some field players on there. We'll mix it up. Nah, who needs field players? <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> as long as you keep a clean sheet, I mean, you figure a little, you know, 10 other players can at least get a goal. Yeah. So Hopefully. definitely definitely excited to have our guest on, Sabrina D'Angelo. Two for two on two clean shutouts for North Carolina. They are on top of the table. So, But let's look at what happened last week in our read-off wrap-up. NWSL wrapped up their second season or second week of the season last this past weekend with games on Saturday and Sunday. The Red Stars edged Kansas City 1-0. North Carolina stayed unbeaten with a 1-0 win over Portland. Seattle easily handled Houston with a 5-1 victory. Orlando, Washington drew on the lifetime game 1-1 in their new stadium. And Boston just narrowly beat Sky Blue by a score of 1-0. In local MLS action, the Philadelphia Union drew Montreal Impact 3-3. The Union blew a 3-0 first half lead, Oof. but did snap a losing streak, a four-game losing streak with a 3-3 draw, which a loss it felt like. Dallas beat Kansas City 1-0. They are the only unbeaten team in MLS play. Champions League wrapped up last week with their quarterfinals. Barcelona and Juve tied 0-0, but Juve advances with the three goals, so they're off to the semifinals. Monaco down Dortmund. They will advance. Atletico Madrid beat Leicester to knock out the EPL champions, and Real Madrid beat Bayern Munich. So there we have it. Barcelona's through. Monaco's through. Atletico Madrid is through. Real Madrid is through, and I think the one that everybody's really going to be eyeing on is Atletico Madrid and Real Madrid drew each other in the next round. Yeah. I mean, the matchups are magic. Yeah. From every single stage out. Every single team right now can be debated as 
we could be the champions and every single debate could hold hold weight. Yeah, I think it's true that every time we talk about Champions League, I change my team every week to whoever the <laughs> yeah. great team is. Yeah, whoever's whoever's on the hot burner. In FA Cup action, Arsenal beat Man City. They were down one nothing in the second half, but came back and beat Man City. They advanced to the FA Cup final, which they will play Chelsea, who beat Tottenham by a score of four to two. And other EPL action, Ibrahimovic for Manchester. United tore his ACL. We'll, we'll break that down in a few minutes of what impacts that can mean for a, a North American or MLS soccer. Um, so look at the, the local flavor was the Union. They had a 3 nothing lead on the impact. Like they were cruising. They were going to snap the losing streak. They did snap the losing streak, but it, it feels like a loss when you are lose, lose four games in a row. You've only got two ties. It comes to the point where here on out, draws are losses in my book. As much as, yeah, you got a point, but... When you have that big of a lead at home and you draw at home, a draw at home is to me a loss at home. Yeah, I think you're right about that. Absolutely. You need you need the points. You need to get back in the climb up the table, so they say, climb up the standings, get back get your team back in playoff position. And you know it's tough. You know, they're looking up three goals into this to a Montreal club who isn't exactly setting the world on fire. One win on the season. Um, you know, some notable names, but not a really great, sharp club. I mean, I think that three points was mandatory, and they came up short. I mean, it was, it was a heartbreaker. I mean, a sub came on, you know, scored two quick goals, and, you know, the goals were defendable. I mean, you know, you can point a lot of fingers, but I look at it as a whole team collapse because you're at that point, everybody should be coming back. You know, the coach should be putting the players in the park to bus. So I look at, you know, the blame game is everybody gets to blame on this one, you know. Yep, coaching staff, players, and there's got to be that accountability, you know, that I know that we hear every week. Jim Curtin put it saying, it, it, this is on me, this is on me. But if anything, players got to start putting their hands up and be like, this is on us. It comes to the point where Jim Curtin can only do so much. At the end of the day, the players have to execute and finish. You put yourselves in a three-zip position, finish the game out. Spoken like a true coach. As a coach would say, hey, it's not the coach's fault, it's the player's fault. Yeah. I like that. No, but it is. It is to to I, I get certain, it. You know, I to it. a certain extent. There's too much in this I think in sports where coaches are getting fired, coaches are getting blamed. Their job is to prepare you and put you in the best position to win. If your coach does his job right, he or she. The coach did put the players in the best position to win. They got themselves in a three nothing position. You're coaching, you're training. Your soccer IQ should have been enough to maintain that three-goal cushion. Opening up a can of worms for a debate. You know, we're going to be going through the next 20 minutes. I love the topic. I mean, and it's it's common. I mean, it's every game. It's it's a situational thing where, you know, hey, you do have the three-goal lead. Yes, in a game. Is it the co- You know, we're talking from, I believe it was around, let, let's just say, 65th minute in the game on. You know, we got a 90-minute game. 65th minute, the granted, you know, your team is up 3 0. And I know under the, with the Union Montreal game is a little bit different scoreline, but we'll just say for argument's sake, 65th minute, because generally that's the time that's usually tactical change time of a pro coach. Yep. That's when the subs come on. It's, I don't want to say scripted, but you know, you look across the league and across the pro level, that's a, right around when the subs come in. So let's look at hey, is it the coach or is it the team in a must win? I mean, this is. I mean, at this point, you know, you this is this is basically a playoff game. First, you know, second month of the season where you got to get your three points. So, is it now we're back to is it the coach or is it the players? And you know, I see your side that they hey they put him in a position. The coach got him up three nothing. What are you going to do? So I you know I, but the the thing though you know getting back to this game in particular, the goals weren't really great goals they were kind of soft goals there were sub coming in yeah it was, it was a they weren't spectacular they were I would say they're on the softer side you know Definitely. the goalie the, you know goalie blunder I think I think the goalie took no criticism but obviously the last goal the goalie put it right back out you know it, you yeah. either parry the ball wide or you you know yeah you can't put it back in like that you just, you're, you're setting yourself up for failure right that um it does come to the point where you're losing all these games, and every week he's starting to change the lineup because what else do you do? Um, we've all been there. You and I have been, you know, we've coached the highest level that 
well, if you consider college highest level, but um, next highest level of the pro in America is, is college, and we both coach in college, and there's teams that you and I have coached have been on losing streaks, and what do you do? To a certain extent, you have to reward some of the backup players, and not just reward, but you have to mix up the lineup, change it up, try something different, because the definition of an insanity is doing the same thing and expecting a different result. When the same thing isn't working, you almost have to change it up. We saw Ray Gattis start. That was, that was a, a mix-up, a, a guy that's been with the union for a very long time, but changed it up. I have no problem with him changing the lineup because the 11 he'd been putting out there wasn't winning. So you have to just make man, next man up. Right, but was a left back change for, you know, a defensive back compared to an offensive back a real change on the team? I don't think so, but I think it's more of a everybody's jobs on the line here that, you know what, maybe that's not what we needed, but you are not producing enough for us to win. So we have to try maybe a defensive more. And that hasn't really been their problem. It's not the defensive end, it's just the lack of timely goals and giving up late goals because you're pushing up so much. So maybe that was the idea, get that early goal, which in a way should have worked because Ray Gattis is more defensive and you got a three-zip cushion, even better. You got more defensive mind players in there, but it didn't work. Right. You know, on paper, I agree with it, but at the end of the day, paper doesn't win games. The players on the field got to win the game. That's right. So definitely – Feels like a loss. I mean, especially when you look at it, a, a three-game homestand, you walk away with a point. No excuses, man. Looking for seven points, you come away with one. You yeah, know. That's, that's what we were we were talking a lot about that is, is uh, um, doing the math before, and it's a, it's a tricky thing that I think a lot of Uni fans would have been fat, satisfied with maybe a win and two draws or a win and win and a loss. Any type of those combinations, I think anything over four points we would have been like, okay, four or five points, okay, I get it. Get on the board. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I mean, to not even, yeah, like I said, not even get on the board. They had that early goal against Portland in that first game, and it was downhill from them. Gave up three goals and gave up five goals. So really, five unanswered goals, and then you get three goals and then three unanswered goals. So it's the same thing that when the slope starts getting slippery, it gets really slippery in Philadelphia. That's right. To the point where... It, 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 if the game was any longer, they would have lost that game. I guarantee if the game was 10 minutes longer, they would have lost. Right. And, you know, any team that is at the bottom of the standings in any sport, you know, the fan base is, of course, going to be very critical, which they should be. I mean, people are paying their hard-earned. That's what I've been hearing. Their, you, you've been there. We've been there. there for all the games. We hear a lot of the shouts. That's right. And, and that's just Philly right fans. So. Philly fans are as authentic as they get. They wear their feelings on their sleeves, and they wear it on their mouth. You're going to hear what Philly fans – there's no shyness with Philly fans. No, but the thing is, this is the time where you see how knowledgeable your fan base is. This if, is true. If they can pick out, you know, actually weed through the the, the nonsense, you know. Yeah. Your team's losing. Let, let's get their real, you know, meat and potato of the loss, you know. But it's easy just to fire shots to fire shots. Yeah, you know? the fire shots out. This coach needs to replace that player. And he's, tell me, give me a solution. Because we see a lot of journals out there, and, and nothing drives me up the wall more than – journalist saying fire this guy get another guy in there well okay fire him but what's the other guy that's going to come in what's he or she going to do right it just i'm talking in general in sports and people talk about canning a coach w what are we going to do but um we definitely will change the page we have a guest coming on in a, in a few moments john's going to be handling the phone line here i'm going to build this interview up give you a little background on it the player we have coming on the show plays for North Carolina in NWSL. They were formerly the New York Flash last year, Sabrina D'Angelo. She also plays for Canada's women national team. Won a bronze medal this past summer for Team Canada in the Rio Games. Obviously won a championship with the Flash this past season in NWSL, so a very exciting past six months for Sabrina D'Angelo. Also kind of neat going to North Carolina to play that she played her college ball at South Carolina, so not too far away from where she played her college ball, but we'll definitely break down her career playing for the youth teams of Canada, playing in NWSL for technically two different teams, the same team makeup, same coaching staff, same players, but be interesting to break down that whole idea of the move and now with, with Carolina sitting on top of the table with six points in Two games, definitely exciting. You know, the NWSL is, is off to a very, very fast start this year. Um, you, you look at Carolina, they're top of the table with six points. They've gotten two 1-0 wins. I think the neat part about having 
Sabrina D'Angelo on tonight is that she came up with two clean sheets. It's the only team in Indian Wells that has had two clean sheets. You know, they've got only two goals for, but two wins, so it doesn't really matter when you only win by one goal. A win is a win, so they're, you know, it's only two games in. I don't want to get too ahead of myself, but they're top of the table right now, sitting at awesome 2-0 and with six points. The other team that's close to them is Seattle with a win and a draw, so they're sitting at four points, but I believe that we have Sabrina D'Angelo on the line right now. John? Yep, yeah, I'm here. <laughs> All right. Welcome to the show. How are you tonight? I'm doing well, and yourself? Good, good. I guess it's nice to have a couple days off to recover and get ready for the next set of games. Yeah, of course, especially after a tough game against Portland. A couple days off isn't bad. Definitely. It's a long season, so, I mean, you look at it as, as a season's a marathon compared to the college season where it's all just a, a, a fast-forward sprint. But, I mean, you guys must be feeling good about yourselves. You go to Washington, get a one-zip lead, and then you, you face Portland. It finished, you know, you know, top of the table last year, and to be able to shut them out as a goalkeeper, I mean, what did you see and what have you seen the last couple of games that helped you get that shutout? Um, I mean, I just think the style of play that we're continuing to play is very exciting. And, I mean, to go into a three back against Portland was amazing to see how well they did in the back and then the midfield and obviously the forwards. Like, I didn't have a lot of work, thankfully, um, back there. But, yeah, they did a great job in front of me and – the shutout's just as much theirs as it is mine, for sure. I think the neat part is, like you said, you didn't have a lot of work. John and I are both goalkeeper coaches, and we really pride ourselves on having a really good open communication with the back line that you know, a lot of the outsiders don't realize. If you have such a really good back line working with you and you do a great job in commanding it, we teach young kids that you really take yourself out of having to make desperate saves. And, and how does that work with you in developing the game? Because you're, you're still pretty young. You're only 23. But how has that, just that vision and, and working with your back line helped you develop as a keeper? Um, I mean, I think you touched on it a lot with the communication. It's huge, especially as you kind of go through the different levels of play. And um, just making sure you're organizing your back line and making sure, because they're not only mentally exhausted, but they're physically exhausted as well, whereas – we are not working as much as goalkeepers, so we have to be tuned in mentally and just help them out and organize them and tell them where players are running because we can see everything in front of us. So I think communication is a huge thing, and it was something that I got taught very young, and it wasn't obviously as developed as it is now, but it was just like the basics of left shoulder, right shoulder, and just telling the players where to move and it's kind of developed as the years have gone on and I think communication is a huge thing with goalkeepers. I think another big thing is 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 not losing your defenders. I, I coach a semi pro team in Philadelphia and we we had a game last week where one of my keepers exploded on one of the defenders. The defender got beat. It's gonna happen. Your defender's gonna beat, but I think that you've probably realized through time that that's the last thing you want to do is, is ride a defender after they've gotten burned. Yeah, I mean I think for sure it doesn't help their confidence and I know if I was in their boat if they're riding me for maybe hitting playing out too early yeah. or kicking a ball out of bounds or something crazy that happened i they wouldn't feel good that way so i think it's just positive communication and making sure that they're next task oriented yeah, and definitely you know that 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 back line came up big for you when you were the flash last year you guys going on and winning the, the whole championship i mean it, it didn't look good i mean you were good hundred yards away from the winning goal. But I mean, it's one of those things where as a goalkeeper, it's just, it's, you're sitting there just, just watching stuff unfold in front of you. And, 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 and you kind of feel powerless, you know, that you can't control the other end of the field. Yeah, it's tough for sure. And I think especially in that game, letting in the first goal that I did let in, I did have to rely on the team a lot to kind of get us back into the game. And thankfully Sam and then Lynn in the second goal, kind of got us there and then I was able to do my job in the PKs but yeah it's it's sometimes hard being in the back and just watching things unfold with the forwards and the midfielders so yeah I agree <laughs> I guess what we'll go to the PKs I mean I, I mean do you every keeper's got their different point I, me as a keeper when I played I hated PKs and that's just me I hated shootouts I mean what is your mindset like when it comes PKs I mean where does your mind go is a lot of meditation or just what's your focus like um a little bit with my gut, um, I kind of just get into the moment and feel the moment, and it kind of all just flows, seeing their hips open or 
do different things. And I mean, the players are tricky now where they're side footing it and it's not necessarily going where you think and think it's going. But I think for me, it's just being in the moment and just letting myself be free and go with my gut. Yeah. And it definitely worked for you. So, I mean, yeah, thankfully, <laughs> I mean, it was a pretty exciting 2016. You walk away with a bronze medal and you walk away with the NWSL medal, you know. I mean, each probably have its own special meaning to you. Yeah, for sure. Um, like you said, each kind of holds a special place in my heart. And they're two different teams, but teams that were very um, family-oriented and united. And there was a lot of team chemistry in each team. And I think that's what helped us through um, the Olympics and the NWSL season, and especially the NWSL season, I think our unity and just the chemistry on the field and the willingness to fight for each other and be blue collared really kind of got us through to the end. And I mean, the last game wasn't the prettiest of soccer, but I mean, I think that's where our chemistry kind of brought us through. Man, you guys definitely had to, to deal with a lot of adversity, you know, with, with Paul being suspended <laughs> for the final. I'm sure that it was probably harder on him than any of you players. <laughs> Yeah, I'm I'm sure he was having a field day wherever he was sitting on that in that stadium. <laughs> I mean, and that, I think that's a neat part about the, the the flash of last year, which is North Carolina now and, and Team Canada. That you know that if you if you looked at like if there was such thing as like Vegas lines, that neither of you would have picked to walk away with the, the championship or a medal. And I think that's the neat part is just being with these teams that can overcome adversity and, and win a championship or win a bronze medal. Yeah, and I mean, I I think especially with the Canadian team, we've um, really worked hard to develop a new kind of brand of soccer, and I think we were very, very, very versatile in the Olympics. Um, a bunch of different formations in games and just the hybrid players that we had on the field and the depth in our squad really took us to where we wanted to go, and I think um, we kind of got shot a little where I think we could have won the gold for sure, and kind of got snipped there but the teams we played were with the exception of one were all tier one teams and we beat most of them other than for germany so it's it's great to see for canada soccer now looking at the rio games what do you what do you take from that besides winning the bronze medal what was some of your most memorable moments there i think it's the people that i did it with and just the interactions with them and i think for us i'll never forget the germany game the first one we played and Melissa Tancredi in our pregame meeting just being like, this is history for us. Like, if we beat Germany, it'll be the first time we beat Germany, and, like, let's just kind of do it. And watching her go out on the field and absolutely flourish and do amazing things was unbelievable, and it, it brings me chills talking about it. Um, but that game really is special, and just obviously the third-place game and walking around the field after just kind of clapping to the fans, the emotions kind of hit me and just realizing what we had done as a team and all the effort that we had put in that past year to kind of get where we were. It was, it was special for sure. Now, where is your, where is your bronze medal sitting now? <laughs> it's at home. Um, I didn't bring it with me to North Carolina. <laughs> <laughs> it's probably, probably a little safer there with your, probably with your parents, right? <laughs> Yes, I trust my parents a little bit more than I trust myself. <laughs> <laughs> at least, at least you're honest, you know. So, I mean, I yeah. think it's very neat that that from you guys winning the bronze medal in the, in the London Games, that really you guys have started putting Canadian soccer and, and and the names of Canadian soccer are household names here in America. Like you said, Tancredi, Sinclair, you know, a lot of these names people know who they are in, in America, and I think that that's a big testament of how much your program has developed. Yeah, and I think it kind of it helps Canada soccer and also helps NWSL having those players like Sink and Steph LeBay and, I mean, Diana Matheson, all those players in the NWSL and just kind of helping promote the league and Canada soccer for sure. And I'm sure there's some friendly rivals with the NWSL, especially since you guys beat Portland on Saturday. <laughs> yes, it's all fun, and, and it's, it's great seeing Sink after the game and just kind of going back to normal humans. <laughs> So this this season, you know, do you have any like personal goals for yourself? You know, looking you know into this 2017 calendar. Um, not really. Paul kind of gets us to just trust the process, and I think for me, it's just making sure I'm getting better every day as a player, just like the one percent gains, and kind of focusing on different areas of the game and how I can improve each each practice and each time I'm able to step out there on the field. Um, so I think just every day, just kind of making the little gains is my main goal. 
Now you played your your college ball at South Carolina. Now you're playing in North Carolina. You know what has the experience been like? You know now playing in North Carolina. Yeah, I mean it's it's special coming back to the Carolinas, and I'm thankful that I'm close to South Carolina. It's funny because. When I got drafted to the Flash, I kind of went back home and was 45 minutes from home, and now I'm coming back here in North Carolina, kind of close to my second home. So it's still a special area for me, and I'm excited to be down here and and near my school for sure. And I'm sure that you don't have to really get used to the food down there. We were joking with Courtney Nemec. She never really had a barbecue until a few weeks ago. John and I took her out for barbecue, and I'm sure that's something you got accustomed to in the Carolinas. Yeah, that's definitely something I've had before, so I was I was used to it coming down here. <laughs> so, but you know, I want to thank you so much for calling into the show on such short notice, and thank Courtney Nemec for helping set this up. Really appreciate your time, and really, you know, look forward to getting down there for the game, and wish you the best of luck this season. Yeah, thank you very, very much for having me. I appreciate it. Thank you so much for calling in. That was Sabrina D'Angelo, goalkeeper for North Carolina in the NWSL and also for Team Canada. So it's it's definitely a whirlwind to come away in 2016 with a championship medal and a, and a bronze medal. I don't think there's many people can say that. If you look at the roster of Carolina, and or, which was the Flash and Olympic, I mean, I don't, don't have to actually go do some research on that, who walked away with a medal and championship and a medal. Right, we're going to have to go talk to our stats department <laughs> downstairs. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I don't know. I'm trying to make some beep beep noises. Some I need some science sound effects. Sound like there was a squirrel on the <laughs> on the microphone. We got our intern, the squirrel, He's oh, just man. eating up the stats. <laughs> yeah, talk about having a world class keeper on here, dude. You know, coming off getting medals, first two games shot out. You know what it reminds me of is like you and I. Basically, we have no medals. You and I won a charity cup a few years ago together, but um, we actually ended up making it a coffee cup. But um, is no no major medals in in my career. I mean, unless I was like under ten. But it, it is kind of funny that like walking to security for Sabrina, it's like the metal detector goes off. What's that? Oh, that's my bronze medal. Metal detector goes off second time. Oh, what's that? That's my NWSL championship. So you got any more? Just keep pulling out medals. <laughs> Yeah, we go through the airport with you know, it's a couple coins in my pocket. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So, no, we definitely thank you know Sabrina for calling the show and thank Courtney Nemec for setting that up. Um, she's in the middle of flying actually to North Carolina. She actually had a quick flight back to Philly. She is now an aunt. So, congratulations to the Nemec family out there for her brother having a kid. So, I guess that always makes you feel old. Your 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 first you know kid to make you an uncle or something like that or aunt. So, definitely wish the North Carolina team down there with luck and John and I we've definitely looked at the, the calendar and I think out of all the teams that NWSL Carolina's going to be the least hard for us to go down to like oh man I got to go to a game there <laughs> so oh, man. I yeah. don't know it might be so much barbecue I can't <laughs> take it <laughs> yeah maybe maybe that'll be my only problem how how to, how to handle um an interview on a, on a stomach full of barbecue it's just going to be is it going to be east or west barbecue is it going to be the vinegar base or is it going to be the tomato base <sighs> That is a good debate. I think we will we will we will send that in the mailbag. We're gonna come up with some stats, okay? F- fans out there, hit us up. Mailbag at worldsportshow.com. Vinegar based or tomato based barbecue, what do you like? Yeah, and the thing is, I mean, until you you know, people say oh vinegar, because it's I guess it's eastern is the vinegar based. Here we yeah. go, soccer show talking about food again. Awesome. Dude, well, yeah. so, <laughs> right, the we'll have to consult with our Kansas City players in uh, NWSL, too. <laughs> yeah, we can consult with our food department downstairs <laughs> next to our stats department. <laughs> Don't get the two confused. Yeah. <laughs> they kind of just merge. So, But, no, it, it, that was that was an awesome interview, and definitely goalkeeping. And Paul Riley, we've known that he wins championships and wins big games. Good defense and goalkeeping, man. It, 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 it's as simple as it sounds. You win championship with defense. That's it. Build out of the back. Build them up. So we're going to take a quick little breather. After the break, we'll be back with Lloyd Yaxley, Cooper coach of the Orlando Pride in the NWSL. Hang on, kids. Stay where you are. We'll be right back. listening to World Sports Show on WPPM 106.5 Philadelphia. Last week on World Sports Show. In studio guest Scott Crotee. 
camped out that one stoplight for that one day. Pretty I, much. He, I ran the red in town. I, I actually was going. Uh, I got a I got a seatbelt ticket there, going five miles an hour. I couldn't believe. I couldn't believe it. Slow down, bud. Yeah, it's crazy. So why did you choose that university to go play? Because you're from the Reading area, correct? Yeah, from Reading, born and raised. Um, you know, I, I kind of reached out to a bunch of a bunch of Division One schools, and, and at the end of the day, they showed the most interest, and I took a visit down there, and uh, it was the most beautiful campus I'd seen, and it was a good fit. So I'm sure that having f- practice fields and place to play weren't a, a, a struggle like some of the city fields. Oh, uh, no, I mean, like St. Joe's, it's it's tough. I mean, we have we have one turf field we, we share with uh, women's soccer, men's and women's lacrosse. Um down at, down at Gardner Webb, we had, you know, four or five nice Bermuda grass fields to ourselves. It was it was a treat. I'm sure that's a, it's a huge different feeling around us. They're the ones that are getting their bodies beat up. Our accidents that 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 day, it seems like after they get hit, and they, I'm sure they're icing and taking an entire day or two off after the indoor game. I mean, you can barely move. You're icing your knees. You're icing your day. You're just trying to get back on your feet, kind of within the next 24 or 48 hours, and and train train after that. Yeah, and they always talk about the keepers not being in shape, but it's a whole different type of fitness. You look at the indoor game, the, the field players are, are constantly running shifts. They're on for a couple minutes off, and they can catch their breath. But you as a keeper, there's no really hardly any time to catch your breath. Except, like, the upside is there's TV commercials. So, I mean, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a different type of fitness, obviously. Uh, um, field players are more of a, a aerobic, aerobic capacity. Goalkeepers are more of a, an explosive. And now. Back to the WPPM studios in Philadelphia. This is the World Sports Show. And welcome back to World Sports Show. Charlie Flo here. World Sports Show. WPPM LP Philadelphia on the internet. Philly Cam dot org slash radio slash listen our mailbag is mailbag at world com and on our hotline we have lloyd yaxley of the orlando pride keeper coach thanks for joining us lloyd how are you yeah doing well charlie how about yourself oh great great man all moved into beautiful sunny north carolina so i'm not north carolina geez florida so i'm sure things are nice down there yeah uh, well I, i had a few uh roller coasters with actually getting into my apartment but so you went to uh, disney world basically in your apartment <laughs> oh it, it no it wasn't disney world it was just a circus <laughs> <laughs> the, guy, the guys at work have been ripping on me for it but yeah i saw that i saw your post on the internet is that true that you had an apartment lined up but that the tenants that were out of the lease would not leave yeah they refused to leave so so me the wife the two and a half year old crazy child and the 70 pound golden doodle were living in a hotel room for Jesus four or five days while while the bozos <laughs> got all of their stuff out of the place so dude you should have been on a reality show this would have been like season oh, one. <laughs> oh my god like divorce divorce lawyers were lining up outside my hotel room I'm telling you I hope the hotel had the waffle maker at least to make it better <laughs> <laughs> that was the one saving grace breakfast in the morning <laughs> exactly i got you covered on that one hon <laughs> yeah yeah exactly i'm off to work see ya <laughs> yeah yeah at least you can't change the locks you know when you're in a hotel <laughs> oh my lord it was uh it was interesting it oh was man interesting. and then you, and never mind you still got a full-time job with the orlando pride you got to go coach yeah. your keepers <laughs> yeah and then i gotta go and do some work in there as well so <laughs> Kept me on my toes, that's for sure. Yeah, so you guys have had an interesting start to the season. You've gotten a lot of media attention. I mean, obviously, you know, you're the keeper coach, but uh, signing Marta you know, gave your club a lot of attention, and you guys having your first home game at the new stadium. I mean, it's sure it's been a whirlwind from you guys down there. Yeah, it's been great. And, I, you know, bringing in players of that caliber just kind of signals out the intent of the ownership and and the management at the club and you know we we put in a lot of pressure on ourselves to be successful and and uh you know bringing in high quality people and high quality uh, players is obviously a priority to have success on the field so um yeah it's uh, it's, it's exciting times the new stadium's amazing and um looking forward to to getting wins in that place yeah, I know you've you've talked about the stadium, and and we really obviously haven't made it down there because it's new. I mean, walk us through, you know, the 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 game day, you know, in the stadium because we've all seen it that 
in the NWSL that you there are so many different levels of stadiums. Some are pro stadiums, some are like college style, some are high school style. But you're in truly in a pro stadium. So what what's game day like for you guys? Um, I mean, I mean, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't say that you, the game day is necessarily different from stadium to stadium. You just have a, you know, you're obviously competing with. I think we had eighteen thousand fans at this at the game on on Saturday compared to, you know, like a, a sellout at Washington Spirit would maybe be four or five thousand. So you're obviously <laughs> got to deal with the masses and the fans in Orlando are, are pretty intense as well. Like we opened our window in our office and you see all the fans parading down the street with smoke bombs and flares and purple stuff going on. So it, it's, it's great to, to see that level of support for the for the women's team as, as well as the men's team, they get it. it's almost times ten for the men's team compared to what what it is with the pride. But um, yeah, just I mean the only other difference thing would be would just be added security in that big stadium. I got I got asked by the same policeman three times if I had credentials to go down the tunnel. So <laughs> so that, that would maybe be the only difference. Or. Well, maybe that's just because I'm new there and at the spirit. Yeah, you have that forgettable of face, I guess. <laughs> yeah, I know. Like, but who's this weird English guy with a huge nose? <laughs> so, yeah. But, I mean, I, just a testament for, for, for soccer in America and then, and then women's soccer together. I mean, that's like two great you know things in, in one day. I mean, that's like striking a gold mine twice in the same day. That that to, to think of that, you know, years ago to – have that in America, you know, especially as a person who grew up in England, to see these kind of things that you're used to seeing in England, with the fans marching in and the chants and the smoke. I mean, those are things you would only see in like World Cup matches or EPL matches, but now seeing that in a women's game, I mean, we've come a far way. Oh, for sure. I mean, it's, it's, um, I mean, honestly, comparing. Comparing like a, a you know like a Portland Forms game and a Orlando Pride game to a to an e, to an EPL game or a European game, it's it's a fair comparison now. You know, like the fans are just as just as intense. The fans are um, just as invested in the result as um, as anybody else is. So it's it's exciting. It's exciting times. Um, for sure, um, to be able to see how how into it people are getting, which is great for us. And we talked to you before; it was all, a lot of the preseason. It was just kind of you know you, you barely even got your foot feet wet at all. It was more of a you know just getting to know Tom Sermani a, a, as a person. You know you hadn't worked with him directly, but now that you've been able to work under him, and I mean he's a household name in the women's soccer world. What's that experience been like being under Tom? Uh, yeah, I mean he's obviously a vast amount of knowledge and um his um personality is is um pretty laid back but everybody respects him fully um so it's and i think it's actually quite a good balance because the the assistant um Conno smith is kind of pretty intense and and um vocal like i can be sometimes and then tom's more of a a calming influence so there's a good balance i feel like with the staff that you know we, we can vibe off each other pretty well now what have you seen from your keepers i know you, you you hadn't really worked much with aubrey but you had have worked with ashland you know what, what are you seeing this so far in their development of their game this year yeah it's um I mean, to be honest, with with Ash, we we kind of just the, the ball just kept rolling from where we'd worked previously together. It's just kind of getting back in that rhythm again. Um, Aubrey Aubrey's been fantastic, and you know she's um, not only is she an extremely talented goalkeeper, but she you know she supports she supports her teammates really well. Whether that's one of the other free goalkeepers that are training or whether it's the teammates on the field. Um, and she's a workhorse, Aubrey. She just wants to train all the time. And I, I felt bad because um, I've either been commuting from Jacksonville or trying to work out 
how to escape a hotel room with my dog and two-year-old <laughs> child in order to, to give her extra sessions. But now that I'm I'm only 20 minutes away from training and uh, I'm a bit more settled, I'll be able to give her a, uh, a bit more love when it comes to those extra sessions. And then, and then on top of that, we have we have two other goalkeepers in training with us. We have Hannah Siebert, who who I worked with um, in January with the U23 teams, who graduated from Pepperdine, who's doing really really well. And then uh, Amanda Kapal, who um, graduated from FSU. Um, you know, the, the the four of them are working really well together. We're obviously working um, to to get the intensity levels up from all four of them so that um, so that everybody's you know achieving their full potential within our within our goalkeepers union you know yeah i mean it's a challenge you know you've had you know situation where you've had three keepers five keepers six I mean, is there any type of magic number for you when it comes to the number of keepers to work with um i mean we've got four right now and and if i'm being honest it's probably a little too much um, just because I think it's, I think it's different. I mean, it's, it's, it, with, with the environment that we work in where pretty much the whole week of focus is aimed towards Ash and getting her ready to, to be the best goalkeeper she can be at the weekend. Now, obviously that changes if, if one, if Aubrey's playing and the fo- the week of focus is, is in on Aubrey, but, um, it, it, sometimes with four goalkeepers, it affects the reps of uh, that the starting goalkeeper wants to take. But then on the flip side, if we're having a crazy day where I'm being really demanding or we're doing some plyometric stuff or something like that, where it's a kind of physical session on their bodies, then we need those extra numbers to to be able to balance that work-to-rest ratio. But, um, I mean, ideally three, but four we can make work. Um it really depends on the session as well. Yeah, no, I've, I've been through that. I mean, my college team, I had five last year. We're down to four this year. So it, it's definitely, you know, it, it depends on the situation, you know. And, and you know, it's um, also, I think, a thing that you've got this year that probably is a lot easier to handle than the last two seasons as you you had to deal with national team call So there's no major tournament this summer. So the bulk of your games, you know which keepers you're going to have. You're not going to have to worry about like last year when he lost the keeper, and then you, your second string keeper becomes the one, and you don't want to rattle that or, right. or change it up at all. Yeah, and and that is that is tough. But I mean, on the flip side of that, that gives the number two a a, a great a great opportunity for them to prove they can be a star in the league and prove that they can perform at a high level for the team. Um, and, and you know, during the World Cup and during the Olympics, I think goalkeepers had those opportunities to do that and, and prove themselves and I'd say some of those goalkeepers uh, uh, either succeeded at that or, or didn't succeed at that and you know st- still opportunities will come this year they just won't be they just won't be as set in stone as they were in previous years but going back to our goalkeepers if, if something was to happen at Ash like we have we have um, full full confidence that Aubrey's going to come in and do an exceptional job for the team. Now looking at, at some of the, the training facilities, I mean, you, you have a, an ownership group that is putting money into facilities, stadiums. I mean, walk us through some of the facilities you guys have for your trainings every day. So, uh, I mean, it, it's the, the one big difference between here and, and Washington would be, um, would be the, the training facilities because in DC, we were the only team that would be using those fields. So we had 20 fields in Washington that the ground staff would, you know, manage for us and, and put us on the same field. Whereas here we've got the MLS team, we've got the, um, the OCB team, and we have us all trying to, you know, get training times in and around a similar time, as well as maintaining the fields because, I mean, it hasn't rained here for so long. The field's getting dry, and uh, and uh, it, it's a it's a tough it's a tough job for the ground staff to to keep the fields maintained um, to a high standard. But um, as far as as far as training, the fields are right on our doorstep by our locker rooms. So 
so that's nice. And then we have a gym um, right in our offices where the players will go work out and where they will eat their breakfast and, and lunch. And, um, yeah, it's um, it, it, the facilities are great. And and I think as far as in comparison to other teams in the league, like we're, we're pretty well looked after in, in, on that side of things. Yeah, we talk about that a lot on the show, and, and a lot of a lot of players kind of talk about these things, you know, off the record with us of the frustrations of of not even just the women's game, but even the men's game, the MLS, where it's 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 like they're not all equal. That but when you have a facility like that, when you actually have the training facility, a gym, on site fields, and even places to, to get food, it, it, it makes it a lot easier to start selling your brand to outside players looking to come into this league from overseas. That it truly has that European feel to it. Yeah, I mean, for any any player that comes into our environment, it's a it's a top environment. I mean, we've got nutritionists. The players do blood work. There's, um, you know, they get told which supplements they would recommend taking if they're iron deficient. Um, we have a nutrition. You know, obviously the nutritionist works out a meal plan for for each team. Um, and they have a selection, you know, it's like a buffet each day kind of thing, um, that we have caterers come in. Um, I mean, in my opinion, we give we give every player on our roster the maximum amount of um, maximum amount of information that they can receive in order to be to, to be able to perform, like for the first half, the second half of the game extra time if it goes to that and obviously we're dealing with the heat in florida as well um you know we, we're just we're, we're very lucky as an organization to have to have people with that knowledge that are able to come in and help us perform at the best we can well you definitely sparked john, john and i's interest you know with just the, the whole layout of the stuff i mean it's definitely it's something we definitely would love to talk to you more about and, and see you know and it, it's it's definitely the way you know it's kind of that model you know, the teams start taking after when other teams are looking, MLS teams are looking to add a women's team that, hey, this is the way it can be successfully done, you know, to yeah. help this league grow because it's it's situations like this that are only going to help the NWSL when we see this league adding a team here and there each year and, and growth is big, but, you know, a lot of these, these models are what, what going to help bring in and keep players here, so, but... Always thank you so much for the time, Lloyd. I hope the next time we talk, we only have good stories to tell. You know, we hope you don't get banned from your own stadium or living in, <laughs> <laughs> seeing you on some Florida um show. You know, oh my lord, yeah, Florida so news show. From that, from now on, hopefully my my life is like smooth sailing as far as my living arrangement. It's all behind you, man. Because <laughs> to be honest, like work is ticking every box, and I mean it's. I'm really fortunate with what I do. It's, it's, I mean, who gets to say they get to kick a ball of air at people for a living? I mean, it's, I'm, I'm truly blessed to be able to do that. Um, and I'm sure you, you hit those balls a little harder on those frustration days. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, Ash and Aubrey might have something to say about, man, his kicking was really, really something those last few days. Yeah, I could tell his anger out, level by the pace of the ball. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but I mean, everyone has been like, it's, it was actually nice. Like, Con Cono, our assistant coach, he like gave me a bit of grief because I wore an England shirt to the stadium the other day for training and he was giving me grief. And I said, it's just nice to for you to make fun of me and it takes my mind off of living <laughs> in a hotel and having nowhere to live. So, um, yeah, it's, it's, work is great. Living, living arrangements, I'm there now. We've got a place to live. So um, it could always be much worse, right? You're experiencing what the college kid experienced, you know, not getting a dorm room or something. You're going through the American college kid experience. There you go. <laughs> Just with a dog and a two-and-a-half-year-old. Exactly. So. Maybe bring them to training next time if you need a place. I'm sure that you, you can mix something in. You can add it to your repertoire oh, of Lord. training sessions. But Yeah, jump, jump over the dog. <laughs> Awesome. Wrangle a kid. That's better. That's tougher than wrangling a ball in the box. Oh my lord! Yeah, <laughs> you can get him to sit still for five minutes. Like, no, not happening. Yeah, that's not game happening. control. But Lloyd, thank yeah. you so much for calling the show. Always appreciate your time and best of luck no down in Orlando. Cheers, mate. We'll catch up soon. It's Lloyd Yaxley, keeper, coach, Orlando Pride. 
I don't even want to be in his boots right now, man. Having to live in a hotel with your wife, Too a kid, and, and, a, and a dog. <laughs> like I said, as long as that waffle maker is there in the morning. <laughs> yeah, exactly. I'm or good. they're not out of batter. So I, I'm always, I swear, that guy that's out of batter. Yeah. So he just ran out. Right. You know, because I mean, because there are the early birds in hotels. The old folks that are up at like five, six in the morning, say the hot breath it starts at six a.m. That's usually me. I'm the old, I'm the old geezer. I sit there. Get <laughs> and the, and the, the waffle iron thing is kicked by six fifteen. I ain't getting up at six in the morning. Get the for, complimentary paper. But no, I, I've had some ups and downs in hotel experience. The definition of a continental breakfast or light breakfast, they, the way they word it, and it's like just a couple pastries, and that's it. I'm like, like that's which it. continent did have stale mini muffins in? <laughs> continent. <laughs> Tell me. <laughs> The Antarctic Express. Yeah, right. <laughs> and they call it buffet. I'm like, there ain't no buffet. <laughs> it's buffet. Buffet. The buffet. Yeah, I don't remember which hotel I stayed at, but it was one of the hotels when I was working for Sky Blue. It was actually set up through Washington Spirit, the team hotel. And, I mean, they had the guy with the omelet station. You know, the dude makes you the omelet you want. And I'm like, oh. You know, I mean, obviously it was, it was also a Marriott, so I paid a little pretty penny to stay there. But sometimes you pay for what you get, man. That's right. You know, this ain't the Red Roof Inn. <laughs> Buffett. <laughs> so, no, very good show tonight. We had some awesome guests just wrapped up an interview with Lloyd Yaxley, Orlando Pride goalkeeper coach, earlier in the night. We had Sabrina D'Angelo, goalkeeper from North Carolina in WSL, and also with Team Canada, and she's played her college ball at South Carolina. So, definitely some big names in the soccer world. You know, we have a lot more other guests coming in studio in the next few weeks. we got a lot more guests calling in. We're just in the works of setting it all up. You can hit us up at mailbag at worldsportshow.com. If you'd like to email in some of your suggestions of guests you'd like us to have to call in or guests you'd like to get in studio, there's no guests that we will not try to attempt to reach out to. Speaking of Orlando Pride, we got some mailbag feedback that you know people are happy to see Marta, the Brazilian superstar, Huge. now playing currently with the Orlando Pride big fans i mean people are following this this player globally and it's good to see you know we had a couple of our american players play international and it's good to see a foreign player come here and play in our domestic league big time player yeah i mean she was with the wps years ago when she played for the flash but it's it's, it's good to see her come back to this league and and have a fan base and, and she's a household name that's right. You know, it's attention. I mean, with Kaká down in Orlando, Brazilian superstar, now you got both. I mean, it really Double hits head. that community down there because there's a sure. lot of South Americans in Florida. So it's it's almost not just a marketing thing. They're not just signing her for marketing because, dude, she can play. You're not just signing a player just to sell some shirts. No, she can play. But for a marketing perspective, it's good. But yeah. she can play. Yeah, exactly. It's, it's a, you're getting top class. You're, you're not just getting – some dude that was the same thing with Orlando when they got Kaká. You're talking one of the best players in the world. Right. <laughs> Not just flashy, like technically sound like Yeah, it seems like some of the some of the other end up teams that tells, Oh, we signed this guy from South America. I'm like, who? Right. <laughs> Don't just because he's from Argentina doesn't mean he's good. Right. Kaká <laughs> formal formerly best player in the world. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Not too shabby title. Yeah, exactly. In the same club, men and women. Right. So but no, thank thank everybody for emailing into the mailbag at worldsportshow.com. Go straight to John if you want to communicate with John directly. There you go. That's right. Mailbag at worldsportshow.com. Um, you know what? I'm going to fire a couple. We, we only got about two, three, maybe even four minutes left if All we're right, lucky. Let's do it. We'll Just wanted to fire. fire uh, got an email in from Philadelphia. It is asking, what is the most unique food we've ever had at a tailgate? The most unique food. I was down at a tailgate in Virginia. I mean, that's where I'm from, and it was a pro football game, and it was the one of the things where it's the entire like turkey leg. It feels like the actual leg is they just pile meat on the leg, where it's it's one of those drumsticks that is a meal within a meal. I mean, that was it was the most bizarre, but man, it was the best. I think that was the best thing I ever had at a tailgate. Well, I mean. It's kind of. I mean, I did have a little bit more time to think about it because I just throw it at you because I did yeah. read the question. <laughs> yeah. But being from Philadelphia, I've been spent many hours at tailgates because that's just the the ritual. It's not even a doubt when you go to a game or an event, concert. You're in the you parking lot it. more than the actual game itself. It's about the ratios. Almost, I'd say it's a little bit more parking lot time than seventy five, twenty five percent, maybe something like that. About that. Yeah. So I've seen some unique food, but I think. Uh, I guess a a whole pig roast is up there. And oh. a, 
So in Philly, it's pretty unique, dude. That's what's up in, in Philly too. In that's Philly. not something you expect in Philly. It's going back a while, but still, it's you know maybe a whole cheesesteak roast, but <laughs> cheesesteak. That's funny. <laughs> but yeah, it's uh, haven't seen a, a South Philly taco yet at a tailgate, which I'm waiting to see. Oh. Which is a you know for people inside Philadelphia you know what I'm talking about, but it's a. Uh, South, a South Street taco. I have to kind of broaden yeah, it up is. for yeah, for South listeners. Street taco. So basically, it's a monster slice of pizza with a cheesesteak in the middle, and, and they roll it. They roll it up. <laughs> roll it up. Oh, and the grease just absorbs into the cheesesteak. It's just we're awesome at a segue from having talking about a nutritionist in Orlando and having the best <laughs> opportunities in the world, and we just <laughs> totally dumb the show. Well, it, best opportunities. It's all about the um, stomach of the beholder. <laughs> <laughs> the mouth of the beholder. If you want to say that, there's, there's there's all kinds of opportunities. Opportunities to be the best athlete. Or opportunities to be the best fat dude at the tailgate. Right. And <laughs> and this is my this is my mailbag at worldsportshow.com. This is my email to everybody who emails in. Yeah. We get a lot of good emails, but most of them are pretty general, which I do like, and we do toss around. But you got to give us a little bit more specific, because some people write in like a, an an if or if question example. 442 or 433. I know what they're saying, but you got to give us a little bit more parameters or a little bit more description so that we can. Yeah, are they just flatly laid out? Because because nobody has it just flat four, flat two, flat three. Right. It's just it's it's kind of by it looks like a pyramid almost. It, it, you really right. yeah. Do like Christmas tree or park the bus? Like what? I need a yeah. scenario. Yeah, and you know another thing. Are, are any of your four in the back moving up at all? Or are they just staying? Yeah. Who's our back four? Are they all staying home? Right. Are we playing a video game? We're in real life here. <laughs> yeah. 12. But, you know, U.S. Soccer says they put the one first because they're, you know, one four four two For the keeper. For the keeper. Uh, we do that a lot in our college program. That's right. <laughs> but, yeah, um, it's good. You know, we're working on getting guests coming up. We're working on revamping everything. We're getting a lot of good feedback from everybody out there. And it's good to hear a lot of people listening through the actual, the, the vintage thing we call radio, actually, Instead of the internet, we got a ton of people news listening flash. on the stream. News, news <laughs> yeah, flash. Yeah, people listen on the radio still. That's right. So we're uh, on the move getting new listeners. You know, it's we can see the analytics, different countries. It's good. You know, good returning people, good new listeners. Thanks for spreading the word out there. You guys get an A+. Plus. Bada bing, bada boom. That's right. So any other thing in the mailbag or any other news before we hop off the air? We only got about a minute or so left on the show tonight. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to save them for next week. We got some good ones. Um and then we'll put them. We're actually going to put some on Twitter as well. And then we'll yes, put other them. news before we wrap up. El Clasico, Messi wins it for Barcelona. No surprise. That's right. And for if you didn't watch it over the weekend, don't say we spoiled it for you because we did give you the ample amount of time to watch it. At least get the highlights. Yeah, in. dude. <laughs> it's more than twenty four hours later, dude. If 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 you're listening to a talk show and you don't know about the El Clasico, well, El Clasico, your fault. So, but now thank everybody for calling into the show tonight. Lloyd Yaxley from Orlando Pride. Sabrina D'Angelo and Courtney Nemec for setting that up. That's an awesome teammate move. That's an assist, you know. We should put that in a fantasy stat sheet, you know. <laughs> help help a player get on the show. Fantasy World Sports Show stats. Yeah. <laughs> I, I think I'm in the negative today for me. You know, just totally ruining a nutrition talk with just dude, barbecue dude, and food. You didn't ruin it, man. There's, there's those fat guys out there that need our love, too. So, got to help a brother out. <laughs> so, we are World Sports Show. Check us out anytime at World Sports Show on the Twitterverse, worldsportshow.com. He's John DeCrisio. I'm Charlie Flo. This is WPPM LP Philadelphia.